Romans, the third chapter. Amen. I'm excited about the Word today, the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How many knows it sets people free? Amen. Amen. It'll set you free today. Glory yes. to God. Hallelujah. The blessed Word of the Lord. Amen. Romans, chapter 3. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 1, what advantage then has the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much, every way. Chiefly because that under them were committed the oracles of God. Or we could say the utterances of God. Or we could say the word of God. Unto them was, were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true. Say that with me. Let God be true. But every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you that your word brings light. Your light is a, it, it, it illuminates our path, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for eyes that see in Jesus' name today. Amen. 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 Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. How many knows God's not a liar? Amen. Come on, you say that. If you believe that, just say, how many knows God's not a liar? Amen. Amen. Number uh, 23, uh, verse uh, 19 said, God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. How many knows the Lord doesn't lie? The Lord doesn't exaggerate. The Lord doesn't stretch the truth. Uh, the Lord doesn't, doesn't catch a fish this size and tell us how it was this size. <laughs> he doesn't say one thing but mean another. Stories told of a single man named Jerry who had a cat and he loved that cat. And, well, he decided to take a trip to, to England and he left that, that cat with his brother Dan. And when he got to England, he called and said, Dan, how's my cat? And Dan said, your cat's dead. He said, what? Just shocked. He goes, man, you could have broken it to me a little gentler than just saying it and putting it out there like that. And, and Dan, his brother said, well, what do you mean? I mean, just... He goes, well, you know, when I called and asked about the cat, you could have said something like, um, well, the cat got on the roof and we had to call the fire department to come get it. He goes, then when I called back the next day, you could have said something like, well, when the fire department got the cat, it accidentally dropped him and, you know, broke his back and we had to take him to the vet. And then, you know, when I called back the third day, you could have said, the vet did everything they could, but the cat didn't make it. He goes, that way it would have been more gentle. I, I could have, I, I would have been more prepared. It would have been so shocking. Right? <laughs> he says, by the way, Dan, how's mom? He said, well, you know, mom got up on the roof and I had to call the fire department. <laughs> <laughs> you understand, God doesn't say one thing and mean another. Aren't you glad this morning he means everything he's ever said? Come on, somebody. Everything he's ever promised, Amen. Glory to God. That's what I'm talking about. How good, how good it is to know that His Word is uh, forever settled in heaven. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. That, that, that He upholded all things by the power of His Word, the Lord says. That, that gives me such confidence today, Brother Chuck. I can look around and since everything's still being upheld, that tells me that not one single word He's ever heard uttered has failed. Because it's still being maintained. It's still being upheld. Amen. Glory to God. 2 Corinthians uh 1 verse 20 says, all His promises are yes and amen. Amen? amen. Do you believe that this morning? Yeah. I mean, do you really believe that? All His promises, church. Every single one of His promises. Every single time. Every one. Amen? Everything He has ever promised in the Bible. No exceptions. You believe that today? Amen. Well, I'm glad you believe that. I think we ought to start living like we believe that. Help me, somebody. I think we ought to start living life like we believe what we just said we believe, like we just confessed. Amen? Amen. If we're going to confess that, we ought to act like that. Right? Amen. I mean, come on, church. No more acting like God said one thing but meant another. Okay? <laughs> when we hear verses like 3 John where it says, Beloved, I would above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. We would believe that's exactly what God meant. Amen? Amen? That we'd be blessed, that we'd prosper in every area of our life, whether it be materially, financially, spiritually, that God wants us blessed. When we hear things like, by His stripes, we were healed. How many of those word means is? Amen. We would believe that. Not just when it comes to a cold or a headache 
No, I'm talking about when the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. God means what he says. God means what he says. People may lie. Many do. Folk lie about all kinds of things. Folk lie when they don't have to lie. You ever notice that? I know folk who just tell the story, and there's no reason. They just, they just, they just can't stop themselves. Folk will lie about friends. They'll lie about, they'll lie to their friends about their other friends. <laughs> they'll lie on strangers. They'll lie to people they don't even know. They'll lie on the preacher. Help me, somebody. They'll lie about God. <clears throat> they'll lie to God. Folk lie to God. It's like the guy who came home drunk one night and man, his wife had to help him into the bed. She's tucking him in. She's out, I'm going to pray for you. And she says, Lord, I just want you to touch my husband who lays here drunk before you. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't tell him I'm drunk. Tell him I'm sick. <laughs> Over lie to God. <laughs> Let me say this. That there's no one who's ever been lied about as much as God. I mean, the first time we hear somebody bringing up uh, uh, something that God didn't say, it's surely He didn't really say. I mean, I've had people say some bad things about me. Ugly things, mean things, despiteful things. I've had some bad things said about me. But I've never had people say things about me that I've heard people say about God. No one's ever said Tommy Howard put cancer on that person. But they'll say that about God. No one's ever said that Tommy took the life of a child or, or, or caused some terrible natural disaster. Nobody's ever said that about me. And some mean things have been said, but, but nothing like that. But folk have said those type of things about God. No one's ever had their, uh, if I could say it like this, their reputation as slandered as God has. People have been told, it was God who made you sick. He's the one uh, who put pain and suffering on you to teach you some kind of uh, lesson. Now, oh, it's not God's will just to, to heal everybody. Well, let me, they didn't get that from here. They didn't get those things from here, okay? From the Word of God. God's good all the time, Amen. church. And God's not a liar. Amen. I'm telling you, God is good and God is true to His Word. Hebrews 6, uh, 12 and 13 says, When uh, God has confirmed His word, His promise, His oath, and it is impossible for Him to lie. Impossible. And that, you don't understand what the word impossible means? I mean, there's no way it could happen. It's impossible for God to lie. Church, there is no room for uncertainty. He will do what He said He's going to do. Amen? We need to trust Him. I do, preacher. I do trust the Lord then we need to act like it. We need to live like it. Come on, somebody. Uh, if God said it, that's the end of the, of the discussion. If the Word of God is very clear on a subject that matter to you, that's the end of the discussion. It's not still up for debate. Someone said, Pastor, what about that time that, that, that when, when, when things don't turn out like the Bible says? What time exactly are you talking about? Tell me about that time. There's never been a time that the things haven't turned out like God said they would turn out. Well, you know, Pat, what about Aunt Sue, Pastor? She was, she was believing such and such, this, that, that. Friend, you don't know. Can I be real? You don't know everything. You don't know every detail about everything. And even if you could know all the outward evidence, you don't know a person's heart. You may think you know somebody's believing one way for something. They may not be believing that way at all. You may think somebody's standing in their faith about something. They may have no faith inside at all. You don't know. You can't know. Y'all hear today? What about that time it didn't turn out like God said it would? There's never been such a time. There's never been such a time. The Bible says man looks on the outward, but God looks on the heart. Glory to God. Verse 3 in our text this morning. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? No. Is that, that was pretty clear, right? Because somebody doesn't believe, does that mean that the promise isn't true? No.
It's just that if you choose not to believe the Word of God, you don't receive what the Word of God says you can have. Any promise, any Word of God you choose to believe, amen, you can have. Any Word of God, any promise that you choose not to believe, you won't receive, amen. But that doesn't make the promise void for anybody who will believe it, anybody who wants to stand on it. Sometimes the proof, sometimes so many people's proof is because it didn't happen for somebody. Well, I don't know what somebody was believing at all. That doesn't make the promise of no, of no effect for me. It's still good for me. You know, you have to choose to believe God. You have to choose to move in faith. You have to choose to trust God and act on it. Faith is a choice. Amen? Faith is a choice. Apostle Paul said that believers, that's us, that's born again people, should have the same spirit of faith that he has, that Jesus has, that God has, 2 Corinthians 4, 13. We believe, therefore we speak. We believe. What is it that we believe? The Word of God. Therefore we speak. What do we speak? The Word of God, what God says. We believe it, therefore we speak it. We don't say anything different. We speak what we believe, the Word. Friend, you, you can operate in the faith of God. Amen? Amen. Paul said, Galatians 2.20, I have been, cruci been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Not me, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Just because somebody else chooses not to believe, that doesn't mean the faith of the Son of God has been made void. What if some choose to not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith, the promise, the word of God without effect? No, verse 4 says. God forbid. That's a pretty big no. You can operate in the faith of God if you'll believe this word and act on it. What did Jesus say? Mark eleven twenty two to his disciples. Have faith in God. Or literally, have the, the God kind of faith. Truly I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe the things which he says, he shall have whatsoever things he says. Amen. Confession proceeds possession. He shall have whatsoever things he says. Your confession proceeds your possession. You can tell what a person believes by what's coming out of their mouth. You can tell what a person has by what's coming out of their mouth. That's what they have. The Bible says, let the weak say what? Well, let the poor say. Why? Because confession leads to possession. And Jesus said, he shall have whatsoever things he says. Therefore, I say unto you, when you pray, Mark eleven twenty four, 24, believe that you have received and you shall have. That's the God kind of faith that believes what God's word says. God forbid, verse 4, let God be true, but every man a liar. Let God be true. Glory to God. And everything else that doesn't Say the same thing God says. That's a lie. Don't entertain it. Let God be true. You've got to let God be true in your life. God's true whether or not you let Him or not be true in your life. God's true whether or not you let His Word be fitted in your mouth and, 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 and direct your path, direct your life. He's still true because as a matter of fact, God's Word already tells you what happens when you don't. There's some truth on that too. You've got to let God be true. When anyone, anything contradicts a promise made to us in God's Word, we need to reckon. We need to account God's Word to be true uh, to, uh, to, uh, and that person or that thing to be wrong. It's not debatable. It's not, I'm going to consider your side. When a person or anything uh, says anything or, uh, contrary in your life, when I say thing, I mean, I mean the report, the pain, Says it's saying something different than what God says. You reckon God to be true. You account God to be true in your life. Not that. Whose report are you going to believe? The Lord's. If you'll believe the Word of God, if you'll speak the Word of God, and act on what you can have, everything the Word of God says you can have. 
Jeremiah 1 12, God is active and alert. He's watching over his word to perform it. Man, we were having Sunday school this morning and we, we was preaching, we was using a verse, uh, I, I think it was 1 John where it says, uh, it, it, we have this confidence that, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know that if he hears us, then we have the thing that we asked of him. Amen? That's what that verse says. And it dawned on me. Man, when I act, when I when, what's God's will? God's word. So when I when I when I'm speaking His word, and and First John said He hears us, it dawned on me. Of course He hears me, because He's watching over His word. When He hears me say His word, when I ask anything according to His will, according to His word, we know that He hears us. Why? Because He's watching over it. He's watching over it to perform it. Amen. And we know if He hears us, we have the things which we ask. He's active and alert. He's watching over His Word to perform it. What does that mean? That it means He's spoken His Word. Amen? It's here and it's always been here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. He's looking for someone, could be anyone, who will believe His Word, who will speak His Word, who will act on it. Amen? He's watching over it. He, and it will accomplish that what he said. 2 Corinthians 16.9, the eyes of the Lord are going to and fro over all the face of the earth, seeking someone whose heart is perfect towards him, uh, on whose behalf he can act. He's looking for him. You'll never find yourself in a situation where you are exercising faith in God, where you're exercising faith in His Word. In other words, you're believing it, you're trusting it, you're acting on it, you're speaking it, and you're speaking it only, and it fail you. You will never find yourself in that spot. Amen. The Bible says this. It says, Heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or tittle of my word will ever fail. Mark, or, or ever pass away. Mark 18.31. Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish uh, that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. How many of us that's what happens when he speaks his word? Amen? It does what he says. How many understand this morning? That's what happens when you speak his word. It will accomplish what he said it would. Glory to God. That's what happens when you speak His words in faith. Faith, don't forget about faith. Faith is how we access the promises of God. Faith is what activates the Word of God in our life. Take salvation. The Word says in Ephesians 2 eight that you have been saved by grace through faith. That not of your own is a gift of God. Amen? Amen. Romans, um, what is it? 4.16 4.16 says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end that the promise, the word, whatever you want to say, might be sure to all the seed. You know what grace is? Grace is simply having all the goodness of God that we don't deserve available to us on the basis of faith. <laughs> Just having all the goodness of God, of everything God said, uh, uh, that we don't even deserve but made available to us on the basis of faith. Glory to God. Your faith positions you to receive. In the book of Hebrews, Hebrews the fourth chapter, actually, Hebrews chapter three, the author of Hebrews is... Well, he's reminding the, the reader uh, of, of a time when God had spoken a word, Numbers 13, where God had given them a word concerning the promised land and the nation, Moses led the nation of Israel up to the edge. And they sent in the spies. Y'all remember the story. They sent in the 12 spies. And the 12 spies came back and 10 of them had an evil report of unbelief, the Bible says. And, and, and the whole congregation decided they wanted to listen to that. They didn't believe. They wanted to listen to those who were doubted that they could do it. Who doubted what God had said. God said, go, the land is yours. Enjoy. Have a good time. Amen. I'm with you. Paraphrase. And they got up there and they saw some giants and they saw some, some obstacles, some problems, you know, and, 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 and ten of the spies came back and said, oh, we can't do it. But God had told them they could. And two of them was like, but God said. But ten of them said, no. Well, sadly, the whole nation Israel at that time listened to the ten for the most part. 
And so he's so the author of Hebrews here in chapter three is, is reminding them, and he says this in verse fifteen. He says, um, "While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provo uh, provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned? Somebody say sin." Whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that be believe not? Who did he say wouldn't enter in? Them that believe not? So we see, verse 19. So, in other words, he's, the author is making a point. He's saying, So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. When we read that those who had sinned, the sin was unbelief. That's why they couldn't enter in. Amen. As a matter of fact, uh, the, one of the grand themes of the book of Hebrews is talking about faith and unbelief. Belief and unbelief. Faith and not having a uh, 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 faith. It's, it, that's why in Hebrews chapter 12 when you read, Wherefore, lay aside every weight and the sin. Still talking about the same one. Unbelief. Lay, that unbelief that won't allow you to enter in. What does it say? Wherefore, lay aside every weight and, and the sin that so easily besets us. Amen. Finish our race. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our what? Faith. So one of the grand themes of the book of Hebrews is don't operate in unbelief. Operate in faith. Hebrews chapter 11. So anyway, that's what he's saying. And chapter 4 begins like this. Let us therefore, based on what we just talked about, he's telling the reader, based on this example I've given you of how unbelief cost them. They had a word, the land was theirs, but they didn't enter in, and they didn't. It cost them that sin, those who were in unbelief. He says, let us therefore fear, lest they promise. So I say word. word. Could be a word. It is a word. Therefore, fear, lest they promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. See, the author of Hebrews warns us, the readers today, that there is a way for us to fall short of God's promise. Isn't that interesting? Because he's watching over his word to perform it. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away before one jot or tittle of his word. Amen. He's watching over it. Amen. But he says there is a way that it will fall short. Notice this also. Lest any of you should seem to come short of the promise of God. See, the fault's not on God's side if the promise doesn't manifest, is it? He says, lest any of you hearers seem to fall short of the promise of God. For unto us was the gospel, was the word, was the promise, whatever word you want to put in there, they all fit right there. Unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. The word preached, the promise, the gospel wasn't profitable to the hearer because they didn't mix it with faith. They doubted it. They doubted it. They doubted the promise. I know there's nobody within the sound of my voice today who's ever doubted one of the promises of God when it comes to something pertaining to you. They did. They doubted. And they didn't receive the promise. They didn't believe what the Word said. And it didn't profit them. In other words, that they didn't gain from it. It had no effect in their life. They fell short of the promise of God. Now think about this. Listen to this, church. The people of God. The, well, let's just let's just think about the, the the people he's referring to here in uh, Hebrews chapter three, uh, all the way back to Numbers thirteen. Those people saw God's miraculous hand deliver them from Egypt. Okay. They saw he parted the Red Seas. Amen. He was a fire by night. Amen. He was a cloud by day to them. He provided a manna from heaven. But they didn't believe that he was able to do what he said when they came up and they saw a giant looking at them. I mean, why would anybody who witnessed all God's ability on display doubt him just because a problem shows up? Oh, there's giants over there. Boo-hoo. Let's go back. Let's be slaves again. Why didn't they believe God? I mean, God already did so many miraculous things in their life. 
It's not like maybe somebody's uh, talking to you and, and, and trying to talk you into trusting God for your healing and, 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 and nothing to point back to. I mean, they're standing at the edge of the promised land and there's just some big people over there and they, and they get said, well, don't you remember he parted the sea? Don't you remember he's on fire at night? Don't you remember when well, it was a cloud over us? Don't you remember? Y'all with me? They, I mean, they had a lot more stuff to reference back than maybe you do that you know that you're aware of. Why didn't they believe God? Why didn't they of all people have faith? Same reason as today. They got their attention focused on the wrong things. Focusing on giants instead of God. Focusing on inadequacies instead of God's sufficiency. Focusing on what they don't have instead of what God has. Focusing on what somebody else said instead of what God said. Let God be true. Everything else that says something different a lie, be a lie. That, that's on your end. Because the fact is, it is. God is true. And everything that contradicts Him is a lie. But you got to, it's just like any other word of God, like any other promise of God, you got to reckon it, account it into you. You got to reconcile it into your life. It's important what you focus on. Quit looking at the problems in your life and Focus on the promises of God, the Word of God. Remember what he said over there in Romans chapter 3? He said, just because some don't believe, does that make the faith of God of none effect? No. Just because, just because uh, Harry, uh, not that Harry, but you know, some other Harry in another church in another place, just because Harry don't believe doesn't mean that, that, that God's not going to do it for you. She's probably not going to do it for Harry because these things are for those who believe. Amen, who believe. Church, God's Word will work for you and anybody else who will believe it and act on it. Amen? It's time to trust the Lord. Glory to God. It's time to trust Jesus. Maybe like never before. Uh, how about enough lip service uh, and give Him your life. Let Him fight your battles for you. Amen? Glory to God. He'll deliver you from whatever the enemy brings about. He can set the captive free. Amen? You might need to check your focus. Make sure you ain't mesmerized by some giant, some problem, by, by some words that you've been listening to. Are you fully trusting God this morning? But it's cancer. But He's God. Amen. You can't run every time the problem shouts out. And I'm not standing here today telling you how easy it is always to do this. Y'all understand? It's not easy to believe God when it's your body in pain. Sometimes, you know. It's not easy to believe God when it's your baby girl that, 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 that's hurting. Y'all with me today? It's not always so easy just to get up and, 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 and say, Jesus bore my sickness and carried my disease. Sometimes it takes a little bit of unction to get, I'm not standing for it anymore. The blood of Jesus is against you, whatever it may happen to be. That takes faith. Takes faith. How's faith come? Hearing the word of God. Amen. You got that. The father of our faith, Abraham, Bible says, uh, Romans 4 21, being fully persuaded that what he said he was able also to do. Are you this morning? Abraham didn't have the Bible like we have. Abraham didn't have the Word of God on his phone. Abraham didn't have the Word of access to everything God ever said in his book on any platform, whether it be Twitter, uh, Facebook, or whatever. He didn't have all that. You do. So if anybody ought to be fully persuaded that what he said he's able to do, it ought to be us. I mean, really, it ought to be me. It ought to be you. That takes faith. You're going to have to focus on God's promise. You're going to have to believe. And you're going to have to trust Him. Amen. Even if everyone around you is doubting, you rise up in faith and say, the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. The, you rise up in faith and say, the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. You rise up in faith and say, not by power, nor by my, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You rise up and speak the word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Don't focus on your, your negative situation. Focus on the Word of God. Speak the Word of God and watch it come to pass in your life. Amen? Watch it come to fruition. Amen? Hallelujah. Keep seeking your answer through the Word. You'll have the victory. Amen? Thanks be unto God who always causes me to triumph, the Bible says. Always causes me uh, to walk in victory. You don't have to work this up, Jim, friend. You don't have to work up faith. There's not some magical formula that you have that you have to do. It's not whether you play three fast songs and then one slow one right at the right moment and, and, and all in the key is C and G. No, it's not none of that. It's just believing the Word. It's letting God be true. And everything that says anything different than what God says, I believe and entertain that. I'm not even listening to that. I mean, how many in here like to sit around and listen to a bunch of lies or a liar? So why do we? Let God be true. All right? I'm going to let it. And anything and everyone that says something different, they're wrong. They're wrong. I mean, you ain't got to call him a liar. You ain't got to say anything. But in your heart, you better. They're wrong. They're wrong. Friend, you better start working on that on the inside because soon you might, you keep entertaining that and you might not be so sure they're wrong. Maybe they're right. That goes against everything that we spoke about this morning. <laughs> James says it like, like this. He says, let not that man think he'll receive anything from God. That waver, that one who entertains, that, that mixture as some people like to call it. That tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God doesn't want you eating from that. He just wants you to hear the good. <laughs> He just wants you to know good things. Him. You get to come to the Word of God like a little child, believing exactly what it says. Amen? You've got to speak to yourself about these things. There's only one person you've got to convince. Yourself. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless his Lord, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all my iniquities. Amen. Who, who heals all my diseases, who's redeemed my life from destruction, who satisfies my mouth with good things. Who believes that? Well, you need to believe that for yourself. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. 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 Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody say God is true. God is his true. word is true. His amen. Word is true. It, 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 it's like a light unto my feet. It's like a lamp unto my path. Amen. Y'all stand up with me. It illuminates everything in my life. It illuminates every. It shines light on every situation I may be facing today or any other day. Glory. Let God be true. I'm gonna let God be true. I'm gonna let God be true. If I'm gonna let God be true, that means I'm gonna believe His word. That means when He says, "Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved," I believe that. Do you believe that? I believe that by His stripes we work healed. Meaning that healing is available. Amen? Healing is available. You can be healed today. I believe that He came to set the captive free. Luke chapter 4. Amen? To bind up the broken heart. Those who are broken hearted. He came to do something about broken hearts. Amen? He came to do something about those who were held in prison. Amen? Captive. Amen? He came to, set, to, to, to preach the, 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 the acceptable year of the Lord. I believe that today. Amen. I believe that he hasn't changed. Amen. How many believe that? I believe he hasn't changed. He's the same today as he ever was, as he'll always be. Amen. And that's good. I said that's good. And nothing but good. There is no shadow of turning in him. There's not even a hint of it. He's good. And I believe that he loves me because God so loved the world. I'm, I'm, I'm here, ain't I? Amen. And not just me, you too. And not just you. That person who doesn't know the Lord. Amen. That person who's bound right now this morning 
just as bound as if they was in prison to 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 to, to, to all kinds of things people are bound by. They're just as bound as if they have literal shackles on their head. God loves them too. As a matter of fact, he loves them no more than I mean no less than he loves you. I believe that. I believe that he's given us this this, this church to, to to do our part. Amen. And, and spreading the word in, 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 in every way we can. Amen. I believe that. Hallelujah. I believe he's here today. I believe he knows the heart. Your heart. If you do business with him, if you'll speak to the Lord. James said in one place, he said, you have not because you ask not. He talked about that in Sunday school. You have to come to Sunday school. You don't come right away. You have not because you ask not. I believe right now is a good time that you can ask the Lord of some things. Amen. You can ask the Lord. Help me. Lord, deliver me. Free me. Show me. You fill in your own blanks. Lord, I thank you for your word today. Hallelujah. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit today, Lord God. Thank you that salvation is available this day. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is available today. Thank you, Lord, that you always cause your people to triumph. Lord God, we can turn our eyes on you this morning, Lord God. On you and you alone. Hallelujah. I'm not looking to you, Lord, and looking to the world as my source. I'm looking to you. I'm not listening to you, Lord, and listening to what everybody else has to say on the matter. I'm listening to you, Lord. I'm letting you be true. Let your truth speak to me into my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We can pray with you this morning. If you feel like the Lord is speaking to you and you want prayer, come forward and pray with you this morning. And none of us are going to say a good confession. And then before we leave, we're going we're to just bless somebody as we dismiss this morning. You're going to turn to somebody and say, I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe two people, maybe three. I'll stop now before we get.